Um, I'd met Stephen um, shortly after I moved to Barking um, in 2005 and um, as one of the few gay people I knew in, in Barking and Dagenham, uh, we established neighbourly friendship and we would talk about men, the weather, uh, over coffee, etc, etc. And obviously many years later, um, in 2014, um, I met Gabriel Cavari and he confided in me actually that um, he didn't particularly uh, like Stephen. So um, I'd offered him to um, stay at my place for a, a few days uh, if he wasn't getting on with Stephen. Um, and then I never heard from uh, Gabriel again. Um, and then I picked that up with, with Stephen. And um, I was very alarmed actually at the time because he said to me that um, Gabriel had picked up a mysterious illness and, uh, and gone back home uh, and that he died. So I sort of put that in the back of my mind as, as uh, very unusual for someone young and healthy uh, for that to happen to um, and, and carried on with my life because at the time there was nothing to indicate to me that there was anything untoward happening. There'd been no outreach from the police, there was no signs to say anything untoward was happening. There was nothing on the LGBT Facebook page that I'd set up. You can imagine how horrified I was when the news broke um, that Stephen was um, under suspicion of the murder of four, four young men. And at that point, I knew that Stephen was guilty and that I had to get the evidence as soon as possible to the police. Um, and I, I took that evidence immediately down to Barking Police Station and was amazed when they didn't want to know. They didn't want to ask me any questions. They didn't want to take my contact details. The, re the reason why I think um, Barking and Dagenham Police are, there's an endemically institutionally homophobic problem is because of, as depicted in the drama, um, they, they prejudge um, before they even actually assess what's going on. So I think tragically in, the, in this instance, it was a case of um, they're, they're gay men, they take drugs, they have risky sex, and they, they deserve to die, quite frankly. And it's because of that, they did absolutely nothing. And I have had that on a, on a macro level. Um, my trans neighbor has had that on a macro level where they don't even, they see something that's LGBT, they don't even bother to find out the facts of the case. They prejudge and then when they meet you, they've come up with, they've been the, um, the judge, the jury, um, they've, they've come to their conclusion. In, in 2011 stroke 2012, uh, preceding these tragic events, um, I was in the position of um, doing an LGBT needs assessment for Barking and Dagenham, um, which I looked at uh, police provision uh, and I quickly realised that that was very lacking in terms of the LGBT community. There was no outreach, there was no LGBT liaison, there was no posters or communication or anything like that. Barking and Dagenham police um, and their, their, their homophobia will allow this to happen again. Uh, and I think it's actually a ticking time bomb here. And, and residents that are LGBT in Barking Dagenham will get a lesser service as a result and it's simply not good enough.